السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم تر كيف فعل ربك بأصحاب الفيل ألم يجعل كيدهم في تضليل وأرسل عليهم طيرا أبابيل ترميهم بحجارة من سجيل فجعلهم كعصف مأكول So we begin inshallah ta'ala with, a, with an interesting comment. This is made by Dr. Fadl Salih Hassam al-Rai. Hiya suratun fiha ibratun li kulli taghiyatin mutakabbirin mutajabbir fi kulli al-usur wal azman. He says, this surah has a warning and a lesson for every, for every rebellious, arrogant, uh, tyrant that lives in any age, in any time, in any civilization, any nation. So he says, this is not just a surah talking about the oppression of Abraha against the Kaaba. This is sending a message to anyone who hopes to uh, you know, wreak havoc upon civilian populations and overpower a, one, a nation or a ruler trying to overpower another nation by means of their military might with the understanding what are they going to do to fight against us. They have no military capability to stand up to us. And with that you know, assumption, with that arrogant assumption, they go in and they don't care about the consequences. You know, when a, when a society is not in power, they talk about the rule of law. And they call people to abide by the rule of law. But when the society has power, they say the law is for everyone else. And we are above the law, we're beyond the law. And the law would apply, it's a nice thing to apply to, but we have a special situation. And who's going to stop them? Even if they trample all over the law and the regulations, they're the most powerful you know, civilization. Who's going who's to question them? Who's going to question their oppression? And this is something that has happened throughout history. It's not difficult to see examples of that even in our time. But this is something that you know, the, the surah is uh, alluding to. Now he gives reasons why he thinks this is the case in the surah, why we shouldn't limit it to a discussion only of the historical accounts, which of course are critical. لِذَا جَاءَ فِعْلْ تَرَى This is why the verb tara came, alam tara. Now there are different ways of saying this. The first part of the ayah roughly translated is, didn't you see? That's the first part, didn't you see? Common translations will read, didn't you see how your Lord dealt with the people of the elephant? This is probably a common translation you've heard before. But he's commenting only on the first phrase, alam tara, and specifically the verb to see. That's been used in the present tense. بِصِيغَةِ الْمُضَارِعِ لِلْدَلَالَةِ عَلَى الْإِسْتِمْرَارِ وَالتَّجَدُّدِ And the specific use of that, now in English translation it comes out as past tense, right? Alam tara, it comes out as didn't you see, and clearly if you understand English, that's past tense. But in Arabic there's a rhetorical function here. And as opposed to saying, ama ra'ayta, right? You could use the past tense function also, but that wasn't used. When that's used, the past tense, it alludes to something continuous. In Arabic rhetoric, in, in balagha, in linguistics. It re- refers to something that didn't happen once, that happens over and over again. And this surah from a linguistics point of view, we'll, we'll learn something amazing about this surah. How the change of tenses carry amazing lessons in them. So that use just of the mudari', the present future tense in the Arabic, with the word lam, regardless of the presence of the word lam, indicates that this is not just something to observe and think about for that time, but for all time. Now we look at uh, some commentary by Shawkani rahimahullah. وَهُوَ تَعْجِيبٌ لَهُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ بِمَا فَعْلَهُ اللَّهُ And this is to, to give the messenger in a sense of amazement and wonder in regards to what Allah Himself did with the people of the elephant. As though he is saying, قَدْ عَلِمْتَ يَا مُحَمَّدْ You already know Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. أَوْ عَلِمَ النَّاسَ الْمَوْجُودُونَ فِي عَصْرِكَ Or the people who are present in your time, they also know very very well. وَمِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ And even the people that came after them, بِمَا بَلَغَهُمْ مِنَ الْأَخْبَارِ الْمُتَوَاتِرَةِ مِنْ قِصَّةِ أَصْحَابِ الْفِيلِ Because of what came to them from continuous narratives and narrations and people telling the story over and over again of the story of the elephant. وَمَا فَعَلَ اللَّهُ بِهِمْ فَمَا لَكُمْ لَا تُؤْمِنُونَ This is the last part of Shawkani's commentary. He said, just in the alam tara kayfa, Allah Azza wa Jal, it is as though he's saying, didn't you realize what Allah does to his enemies? So what's wrong with you? Why don't you believe in him? You're using that to take pride in how Allah protected his house. Then what's, you know, why don't you take that next step towards iman? Now finally, أَلَمْ يَجْعَلْ كَيْدَهُمْ فِي تَضْلِيلٍ